You saved my beans, boy. It's time for Must Have Seen TV, the podcast dedicated to the sitcoms of the 20th century. From uh, Make Room for Daddy to Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I am your TV guy, Brett White, and I'm also a drag queen known as Barb Ardley when I have uh, the energy to be beautiful. Uh, but say hello to the Oliver, to my Professor Whitehead, Ethan K. Hi, Ethan. Hey, Brett. Oh. Professor Whitehead, because your hair is, is uh, yeah, because I okay, yeah, and uh, I have seen the movie Oliver, starring Oliver Reed. Well, and also you're you're a tiki head, and a tiki head. A Go to YouTube head. to see the tiki head. <laughs> <laughs> but yes this week uh well first of all let's do the the business uh you know we got the patreon i'm going to be talking about the patreon at the top of every episode oh, until we get enough uh cash money to cover hot expenses baby um because we're offering even more than just must have now tv now <laughs> yes if, i'm if trying have- to launch a plex server must have now TV is going great. We're having a lot of fun recording those. Uh, we just recorded one. I'm not going to tell you what we what we talked about, but it's yeah, because that comes out next week. We're back. We're time traveling here. Yeah. Um. So we've got the must have now TV. We've got a we have. Uh, you put the Baraboo article up from the uh the must the make room for daddy mm-hmm. episode, and uh, we I wrote a little bit of content up there. We got we have things coming out. But yeah, talk yeah. about the Plex server. I mean, I've so I've launched a Plex server. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure it out. I I I don't. You know, I'm I'm not a tech person. If that isn't obvious, but I have all these old TV DVDs, and I was like, well, let me rip these, and I found out how to rip them, and I have been doing that and building a nice library because baby, you can't trust streaming services to keep shows like the Bob Newhart Show on handy when you need it. So you can stream as of now. The first, I think, three seasons are on my Plex server. Oh, I also uh, did the first disc of Taxi. I've been doing season three of The Odd Couple. We got some I'm Dickens, He's Finster, as well as Bob um, on Brett, there. I've now have, seen a second episode of I'm Dickens, He's Finster, and it was you great. Have both seasons of it on DVD. No. Was only the first one got released. Only the first, only the first one, only the first volume of like two volumes, okay. I think. And then the second volume never, uh, never did. Oh, and F Troop. God, I love F Troop and F- Hogan's Heroes. Which man, we're gonna? I keep threatening. We're gonna do Hogan's Heroes at some point. <laughs> we're um, gonna be talking but, about murder and yeah. sex. Uh, that uh, is the brain story. But my hope with the Plex server is, you know, the big the big idea is to create playlists and have Barb uh, host them like old school, you know, cable TV hosts, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's an idea that just like hit me. And so I'm trying to uh, figure that out. So please uh, go to the if you subscribe to the Patreon, uh, you get access to the Plex server. Yeah, it's a gated community. It's a streaming service. And also all the files might be too high quality and they might be delayed in downloading. So I might need to fix that. But also I need I need a sample size of people to actually test all this stuff. Figure this stuff out. Yeah, figure it out. Figure it out. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Fun. Yeah. So join us up. uh, Join up with us. Patreon.com slash must have seen TV. Yes. It's only five dollars a month. What subscribing helps us get to our goal of being able to pay an editor. An editor. And also uh Zoom, I've learned it costs sixteen dollars a month. So just just three of you can be our Zoom pals, uh, etc. Uh I mean that's basically it. They're actually it doesn't take a lot, but um but yeah, it would be great. Be, thank y'all so yeah, much. I, thank you everyone to to sign up. Uh, when we get a couple more names, we will mention you on the on the virtual air. Yeah, and, and also on on the YouTube, you'll see our mouths moving with your names coming out. But in the <laughs> meantime, <laughs> this we are, week, baby, this week, oh, oh man. boy, we are traveling to really September twenty second to October sixth, nineteen seventy two. But we're going to focus on October sixth, nineteen seventy two. Sounder ruled the box office. Baby, Don't Get Hooked on Me by Mac Davis topped the charts, and ABC aired The Brady Bunch, uh, part three of the Hawaiian epic, The Tiki Caves. Ethan, you must have visited some Tiki Caves before. 
believe it or not, I've actually seen this episode before. Well, and which... I imagine you've been to real tiki caves. Wait, are I've... tiki caves a thing? I've... No, I've been to cave <laughs> and I've been to tiki bars. Yeah. And I don't know. Uh, you could say that maybe Last Rites in San Francisco is a tiki cave uh, because they're they're a jungle theme adventure bar mm. Ooh. Uh, where if you've never been to Last Rites, I highly recommend it. The theme is a plane crashes in the jungle and they set up a tiki bar inside the plane. Oh, that's fun. It's so cool. Uh, the bar itself is the fuselage of a plane. The seats at the bar are airplane seats. Oh, come on. And then if once you, you exit that bar, it's jungle. So they have fake leaves and giant uh, stone heads um, that their smoke pours out of them. At I love points. that. It's a fantastic. Megan, when Megan goes to San Francisco, she always makes it a point to close out last rites. Um, and if um if you ever go to uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, you can visit my friend uh, Susie's Tiki Bar, which is in her backyard, uh, <laughs> u- using actual legit night like mid century tiki everything from Smyrna's legendary Omni Hut, because when it closed down, they scored all of the stuff. <laughs> And it's like, I don't know, I should actually try to, on the Patreon, I should include photos from Susie's Tiki Bar because it's- Oh, that's great. It's nuts that this is just in her backyard. (laughs) Um, I did like, so also just to show you the kind of company that I keep, when I was like, when are you and Brian going to get married? And she was like, oh, I don't know. We have to figure out if we can afford to build a Plinko Plinko board in the backyard first. (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) How are these two things connected? (laughs) Anyway, uh, the Brady Bunch, tiki stuff. Uh, So yeah, this is part three. Ethan, did you watch? Well, we guess we can, before we get into the, you know, talking about the tiki caves, we can talk about Hawaii bound and past the taboo. Maybe. I don't know. Now I made a point not to watch those. So you could fill me in on some of just the background. Granted, the Tiki Caves, the third episode in the in the Troika, in the trilogy, uh, does have a very nice narration at the beginning talking about everything that you missed in the previous episodes. Now, I will say. And I do not remember watching episodes one and two when I was a kid. I do remember watching Tiki Caves, the third. Because this one's got a special guest. Um, I will say that that uh, that previously on excluded some of the bad luck things that so to catch viewers up to where we are uh mike the architect mike brady played by gay icon robert reed notoriously hated being on this show but loved the kids (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's very protective of the kids um uh he gets a he basically a building that he's designed is being built in hawaii so him and the family get to go down there and then the first episode, we see um, they visit Pearl Harbor and go to the Arizona Memorial, which I did not know what uh, that was. And so this is my first time seeing what that is. Very interesting oh. memorial. Um, they talk about Pearl Harbor. Uh, they talk about Pearl Harbor an appropriate amount or do they talk about it too much. Oh, man, it is actually. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's like. They go to the memorial and I can't even remember. There's like a shot of all of them like talking like it feels like uh, Mike Brady's like giving like, you know, it's telling the kids all about this stuff. And then they're all standing like, you know, it's like like, taking it in Pearl Harbor, tragedy, history, etc. And then all and then like Mike Brady just puts on his sunglasses and then it cuts (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, i said all very, i need to say about very her. weird yeah um <laughs> they get set up with a, a local kid who works at the construction site gets like set up as like the the guide so you know he tells them about uh the the he tells them about like how pearl harbor was initially like it was told believed to be like a haunted or like cursed area when they were building it. And I did not Google that. I should look up to see if that was true. We're just like kind of a tasteless story that they were tacking on to this oh. Brady Bunch episode. Um, but yeah, episode one is that uh, they find a, they're in the, during the dig, they find a little, the little tiki. Uh, it's an idol. It's an idol. Little little idol. And uh, Bobby and Peter find it. Bobby is immediately, I'm going to wear this for luck. 
uh, which, you know, we know any, it ain't good luck or point of view. Who knows? Episode one ends with, um, uh, Greg, uh, doing a surfing contest and Mr. Brady wearing the tiniest, tiniest swimsuit I've probably seen on primetime television on a man on prime. Well, on a man on scripted primetime television, uh, at some point we do need to cover battle of the network stars. Oh, which I've, is seen, yeah, I've seen the that. Gorge, the perfect show that gave us such thing as like Gabe Kaplan in a speedo on television, you know, like you're saying that you're saying that the sunglasses he was wearing in the previous scene covered more than his. his <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's a very tiny swimsuit and I, I love it. It's a really nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So Greg goes surfing. Greg falls off the episode. Yeah, it is wild. The very first part ends with Greg like falling off of the surfboard. And like drowning in the ocean. And then you wait a week. Like that is for the Brady Bunch. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> this was this was also the season four premiere episode. Because yeah. this so, is summer. Summer vacation. Yeah. You are you are hitting this right off the bat. They are in a different location. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Ooh. Uh, uh and because really most of this was filmed in uh the the Paramount the Studio. Paramount lot, yeah. Uh, but there were scenes that were filmed in Hawaii. And I will say, like the 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 scenery and stuff is actually very gorgeous. Like all the on location stuff is very lovely. Yeah. Uh, it, episode it, two, yeah. Episode two is just um, the girls take a hula lesson, and Alice throws out her back. Bad luck, because she's wearing the tiki at the idol at that point. Um, a tarantula crawls into Jan's bag. And there is, there are actually a couple of things of like Jan being like, oh, let me get my camera. And you see the hand go in and then it just barely misses the spider. Those shots <laughs> are cool. Uh, and then the spider crawls on Peter. And then they find out that this is a cursed idol. They go talk to an old Hawaiian man who works on the building, tells them to return it to a burial cave. And so episode two ends with like Vincent Price stalking them in a, in a burial cave. Let me just say overall parts one and two could have been 20 minutes <laughs> there isn't a lot that goes on and overall i was shocked by how little the girls have to do in this three-part episode like why wasn't Marsha hitting on or getting hit on by that local boy like yeah that's what these that's what you do on these episodes you go on vacation and the oldest girl falls in love with a boy who's from the place. This was the 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 uh the must see TV goes to Disney World. It was it, all yeah. about the whirlwind romance. It was the vacation romance. And, they, love and I will society. say, like the the step by step uh what Disney World two part are crammed in so many plot lines, yeah. and this really is three episodes about this little idol is bad luck, such as it. Uh, 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 a decoration falls off the the wall above Bobby and a tarantula is on Peter's chest and Alice throws out her back. Like I looked up and there are very few tarantulas in Hawaii. Um, are they poisonous though? Because it was lucky that it wasn't. No, but I did, I did read that they do have a couple black widow and brown recluse spiders. Those you probably can't really show them very well because they're very small. Yeah. Um, but so you have to show a trance on TV. But I, I looked it up and it was just kind of like they're very few and far between. And they came over with like other things and not like native to the area. There's so like it's really yeah. unlucky that they. Yeah, found. very <laughs> unlucky. Very unlikely. We'll, we'll say that, too. Now, uh, so, uh, you know, before we get into the Tiki case background on the Brady Bunch, I will say that oh, I got so much. But baby. I am excited about this episode because a very Brady sequel is legitimately my favorite comedy of all time. <laughs> Period. Uh, and the last, the third act of that movie is this is, is all of the like Hawaii stuff. And I was, and I just, I loved it even. And I, and even little things like, when they get on the plane in part one and they have like the shot of the plane going across the ocean and you hear the voiceover of like the kids and stuff. And, you know, in the movie, 
it's like Mike being like, you know, the coastline of, of Hawaii was formed by Ignatius Rock or blah, blah. blah. And then Marsha going, oh, no, <laughs> I forgot my hair clips. And then the plane going in reverse. California's coastline was formed by so good. <laughs> anyway, uh, any uh, other general Brady Bunch stuff before we dive into the Tiki case? I mean, what, what do you there's so much to talk about. This show is if there is a, a Mount Rushmore of sitcoms, Brady Bunch is one of those heads. It's the prototypical. We don't have TGIF without the Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch, um, when it went into syndication in 1975, it is estimated that an episode of the Brady Bunch has aired every day since then somewhere around the world. Oh, yeah, I could. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, if, <clears throat> It lasted five seasons, uh, 117 episodes. But Which is honestly shorter than one would think. Because yeah. if I just think of like the cultural impact of Brady Bunch, you could tell me 200 episodes and I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. It lasted 117 episodes. Robert Reed was so tired of the show by the end. He he didn't, no one realized that the the end episode of season five was going to be the, the last episode. It got canceled after the, after, after it wrapped, he's just like, I don't want to be on the final episode. It's the one where what's his, Oh, was it? Oh, name? Gets his hair. No, he gets his hair dyed like yellow or orange. Okay. Uh, and Robert Reed's like, these are dumb jokes. These are stupid jokes. I'm not, yeah, I'm a Shakespearean actor. I'm yeah. not doing these stupid jokes. So yeah, so much like uh, the last episode of Make Room for Daddy or Danny Thomas show, he's like, I'm just not going to be in the last episode. So he, he, he skips out on it and then the show's canceled. It's just done. But he gets to come back for the Brady Brides. It is in he. OK, he came and back. Then, oh, we have to do the Brady's. The, br well, was the Brady's. But the then Brady Christmas. Then it is. Uh, so there was the a Brady Bunch variety show. It was a 22 episode animated series yes. called the Brady Kids uh, that included a talking bird, yep. two uh, pandas. Uh, the talking bird was named Merlin and did magic. And there was a dog named Mop Top. Um, it was the, the all the original voices. Uh, but then Barry Williams, who played Greg, was like, I want more money. And they're like, we're just going to replace you for the last <laughs> five episodes. Yeah, so he it was done. like, who cares, man? Your voice is not distinct. Uh, followed Look. by the Brady Bunch <laughs> Variety Hour, which was ordered to series by Michael Eisner. Oh, wow. Was nine what? episodes over six months created by Sid and Marty Croft, oh who also God. created the H.R. Uh, Puffin stuff and Lidsville. And Known all for quality. Um, it also had underwater sequences um, with um the the like the, the croft ets or something oh my god um with uh, who yeah. wasn't was marcia not in it or jan not in it jan was not in it and it wasn't right. because she didn't want to be because there's there's the the rumor being like oh she thought it was stupid and she didn't want to do it she's like i will happily do it but they're like we need to get you in a five-year contract because we're just going to keep doing these things and she's like i don't really want to do a five-year contract and they're like you're out of here. We're going to replace you too. So and then, well, and so like, what's wild? So there's not original Jan in the variety show, not original Cindy, Cindy replacement in the Christmas special, and then replacement Marsha in the Brady's, the hour long I, drama. I believe that the replacement Cindy was because she was away on her honeymoon mm. when they were filming that, so she didn't do that. And Marsha, I believe it was a drug kind of thing. I. I, I don't have that. Well, I don't know. You might be confusing with Marsha's storyline in the Brady's where she's an alcoholic who is running for office. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they did all that. Um, <laughs> the, the Brady Bunch variety show uh, guest starred people like the Osmonds, of course. the Majors, Farrah Fawcett and Vincent Price. Saints Spoilers. all in the family. Um, and uh, also starred Rip Taylor as Alice's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, Alice. Yeah, there's a lavender marriage going on there. They followed that with the Brady girls. Wait, Rip Torn or Rip Taylor? Rip Taylor. Okay, because Rip Torn would be also wild. Rip Torn. <laughs> oh, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Why are you dancing? Uh, uh, so the Brady girls get married was the movie from 1981 
that they filmed it as a movie and then they're like, we can make more money off of this by breaking it up into four half hour episodes. And that yeah. was the Brady Brides. Which they uh, did. Did they do more? They did more than the four. They did not 10 many episodes. More. And, yeah. and they did 10 more. Uh, and what's wild is like the husbands they cast are then Marsha and Jan's husbands throughout the 80s. Yeah. Which is the continuity is wild. Very Brady Christmas. The Brady's followed by the very Brady musical. Um, there's there's a lot. And we can, th there's one man we can thank for all of this. Sherwood Schwartz? Sherwood Schwartz, a Hollywood ghoul if there ever was one. <laughs> uh, and I say that because, like, he has, a, he has background. He did, a, he wrote 178 episodes of Red Skelton Show. He wrote 28 ap episodes of I Married Joan. He gets into producing and he hits on Gilligan's Island. Yeah, man. Gilgan's Island is cheesy. It is dumb. Yeah. It is all on just big honking sets. It is, <laughs> uh, and it's all laugh track. And he he it, it scores out of the park with it. Does ninety nine episodes of Gilligan's Island. Um. Then he's like he's riding you know riding high off of Gilligan. He reads some stat that like 30% of California marriages are blended marriages after divorce or, or, or death. He's oh, like, wow. I think that's going to be a great show. And then puts together Brady Bunch for the rest of his life. He just works on Gilligan or Brady properties. It's just Which... the animated shows, the spinoffs, the variety shows, all of that. Sherwood Schwartz just goes on and on and icon on. <laughs> icon uh, he also wrote the theme song which we can probably talk about the theme song when we start getting into the episode a little bit but... yeah yeah well, then let's let's uh jump into this week <laughs> on must have ctv we talk about the brady bunch episode the tiki caves which is the third episode of season four and it was written by as was parts one and two by tam spiva and directed by as, as was parts one and two, Jack Arnold. And here's how Paramount Plus describes this episode. The Brady boys attempt to return a Hawaiian idol to an ancient burial ground to break the curse it is having on their family. Professor Whitehead follows them and holds the boys hostage, believing that they intend to steal his latest find. Ethan, how accurate is that description? 100%. 100, that is honestly everything up except the last moment. <laughs> that is the <laughs> entire episode. We've done. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole thing. Um... It's great. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't have to tell you, as far as Brady Bunch episodes go, it's quite good. Um, it's it, on the so sometimes. I will say that compared to the first two, because I did watch all three of these back to back to back as God intended, uh, God being sure which Schwartz. Um, I, I will say this is the one that actually felt like an episode of television. The first two were almost like tourism board sponsors. Yeah. The Brady Bunch. Whereas like I, the, this one actually... I liked the editing of this episode, which is a thing I wouldn't like because it does like a scene. The hell? Oh, I just kicked over a ring light that is broken. So whatever. Um, it goes to like a scene of the Brady boys being tied to Tiki statues and being poked at by Vincent Price to smash cut back to the hotel and they're interrogating the girls and then back to Vincent Price and then smash cut back to now mom and dad are talking to the old Hawaiian guy yeah. that like it was like oh this it's actually like kind of has a momentum to it which it took the other two, two did not to get there and i get oh. that it could be a, a tourism video the first two were for tourism hawaii only became a state in 1959 mm -hmm. hawaii, has, hawaii has been a state for 13 years when this episode airs that's crazy and also it kind of puts into perspective that um you know we haven't been a country of 50 states for that long and we could absolutely add puerto rico and washington dc as states we totally whatever should. uh <laughs> um yeah um so the brady bunch i mean everyone knows the theme song yeah written by deval or in a music by deval frank deval who we've talked about before what else did he do? Uh, he, well, you know, he did a lot of theme songs. He did uh, the theme song from uh, I'm Dickens, He's Fenster. Oh. Uh, he he was, his famous one is he did the arrangement for Nature Boy by um, Nat King Cole. 
Ah. But we remember him. Uh, well, he was he was he played the boss in I'm Dick and Sees Fenster, but he was also Happy Kind, the depre- the manic depressive band leader in Fernwood Tonight, starring oh, Martin Mull. What, all right. Oh man. We're going to talk about Martin Mull um, and his passing <laughs> more yeah. in, in a couple of weeks when we talk about Sabrina. Uh, so why did they go to Hawaii? Did you did you figure that out? Can I, can I I just want to talk a little bit more about how fucking bizarre the fucking theme song of this fucking show is. I do think it is weird that it goes from being sung by like a folk singer. I don't the, the sound of the first season theme song is very up unnerving to exactly. me but then it, it then it goes into like the brady kids are singing it so it was originally recorded by a group called the peppermint trolley company of course god they the had 60s. a song oh. called, yeah. they had a song that was kind of a hit called baby you come rolling across my mind um i didn't chart it flows that. off the tongue yeah <laughs> so but they but it was studio musicians recording the music and the peppermint trolley company come in two guys and i think a woman and they sing the theme song and they get credit for it. And then before the show airs, people are like, now nah, we don't really like this either. So they cut out the Peppermint Trolley Company entirely oh, and man. had studio singers sing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Studio singers sing their parts. So that's first season. <laughs> Second season, um, the Brady kids sing it. Third season, they re-record the Brady kids singing it. Well, voices are changing, you know. Fourth season, or I think this is the fifth season, they go back to the second season uh, recording of the kids singing it. Yeah, that's weird. It's so strange. Because, like, they're the oldest they've ever been. Why go so, back to the youngest they ever were? So the Peppermint Trolley Company is all, often cited as the original recording. They recorded it and they dropped their track. <laughs> <laughs> and well, do we know the names of the uh, haunted dolls that sang the first season? Uh, no, Where it's a story of a man named Brady. It's so oh, everyone oh, knows so that. Creepy. Um, yes. So, um, yeah, it crazy. So they're like crazy we're coming back for season four. Now, season three began with a trip to the Grand Canyon, or like Cleveland or something. Like they they had done a summer trip. At the beginning of three. People and remember this was... the Hawaii episode. Oh, God, yeah. This is iconic. Yeah. This is also famous. Also, I will also say, just in general, this is default Brady. I think that when American popular culture thinks of the Brady Bunch, everyone thinks of them at this age. They do not think yeah. of them as like season one, season two, when they're teeny tiny. You think very... of... Yeah. teens and the curly hair which happened because of like the humidity in hawaii and then robert reed was like yeah go with it also <laughs> i'm gay and it's the 70s hell yeah per well, you he know? didn't tell people he was gay well he, no he was very very in the closet um yeah r.i.p robert reed he was very like the things i was reading about him were like he was very pleasant to work with but he could be very just dark and very like because and I, and a lot of yeah. people are like it's because he could not be himself. Yeah, I understand hiding. that. Um, hmm. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so yes, uh, this is when everyone kind of remembers them. It was it kind of like holds that weird place because they were part of the '60s and '70s while also not engaging with the '60s and '70s at all. Well, not engaging with the, the politics or culture. But <laughs> aesthetically, like yeah. the Brady Bunch is aesthetically th- the early 70s. Like it is it it, it yeah. I don't know if it followed trends or pushed trends, but baby, it was in the trends. Yeah. Like it is emblematic. It, it, it's uh wild. Like I like yeah. the, so uh, one thing I didn't mention is that like when they when they fly and land in Hawaii, all the boys are wearing suits. They're all oh, wearing they're, suits. They you all because you when you're get, traveling. Get yeah. dressed up when you traveled back then. It's just wild. Uh I was noticing how thick all the belts were too in this episode. All the Almost belts. Just, all the just huge belts. Oh, the belts. Yeah. <laughs> they said pelts. Vin- well, Vincent Price does wear a huge pelt in this episode as well. It's true, he does. Um then I, I I do take it back. There was the episode where where Marsha met 
Davy Jones from the Monkees. So it did cross over a little bit into pop culture, but they never said, you know, Daddy, what's Vietnam? No. <laughs> I don't know, Greg. There's a new thing called Women's Lib. It means girls get everything they want. A very pretty <laughs> sequel. So fucking good. I'll go first because I'm the prettiest. This is just... Oh, it's just iconic. Two of the best comedic shows. Show us how much time. Brett loves that movie. Brett's birthday was last weekend, and he showed that movie. <laughs> well, yeah, is it's 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 perfect. It is perfect from beginning to end. It is just absolutely s- stellar. It, I mean, it's also my mode. Like '90s nostalgia for the '70s is kind of my sweet spot. My favorite thing, and it works because. It plays off the fact that the Brady Bunch were a show of the 60s and 70s that did not interact with the culture at all. <laughs> that, well, that, I mean, almost like they feel more of the 50s, just how squeaky clean all of them are and how Go like what. <clears throat> so do, do we know why they went to Hawaii? Do, do we know why they went to Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. why they filmed three episodes in Hawaii. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. So. Okay, I'm going to give away the big reveal. Oh, no. Vincent Price is Professor Whitehead. Yes. He's the archae- <laughs> the, the crazy archaeologist uh, that has discovered these tiki caves, filled them with tiki torches, and is and, and wants to steal the items so he can sell them. Which, so he's found, yeah, his whole scheme is a dozen, I, I couldn't track it. Like, it was very, it was like, uh, and I, we see him at the end of the previous episode. It, like, the, the cliffhanger is like, he comes out and is like, looking. Um, Did he yeah. rub his chin? Like, uh, in this photo that I am showing to our YouTube uh, viewers. A true I, icon. Yes. Vincent Price is, is it's hard, like, I go back and forth between who my favorite deceased actor is and it's between vincent price and groucho marx mm-hmm. brett who is your favorite deceased actor bob newhart, bob newhart. <laughs> jesus christ who's your Salt favorite living wood. actor then sam uh, oh yeah sam neil there you go for me it's yeah. amitabh bakchan but um <laughs> so vincent price <laughs> this is what i read is that um Sherwood Schwartz wanted to get Vincent Price on Gilligan's Island. Yeah. So bad. And Vincent Price is like, your show is stupid. I don't care. <laughs> so, um, so he, the, suddenly, you know, Vincent Price is, is, is still popular. Brady Bunch is popular. Sherwood Schwartz makes the, the, the appeal again. And Vincent Price is like, it should be something like Gilligan's Island. Like, so we're we're gonna shoot it in Hawaii. Um, I don't. None of Vincent Price's scenes were shot in Hawaii. All of them were shot on a soundstage in Paramount. On a lot of like old Gilligan sets. On old Gilligan sets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Which is yes. crazy. Um. So yeah. So that's kind of like the the leftover. I don't want to be on your show. Okay, now I will be on your show. But you know, it's it has to be Gilligan themed. <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre so and wild. the character he plays uh so well i mean there there it so much happens you get nothing happens i don't know like half of the episode is him chasing the kids around the caves scooby-doo style yep. um him trying to scare them into running out he wants these kids out of the cave uh which involves him at one point in a very creepy way like being in a giant casket box and then he like tribute to like old horror films yeah he comes out and he's wearing a mask and a pelt and it's like yeah um now what the fuck (laughs) this character (laughs) professor whitehead is uh wild uh yeah that's the that's a really gentle way of saying that he is not office rocker he because he's very he loves this giant tiki head statue that he calls oliver he hugs and it he hugs it, it yeah um there's it, it, if, if action is happening and he's not in, in danger of the kids running away he will go over and talk softly to the oliver statue um That's correct 
it's <laughs> it's great and and by the end of it the the brady kids are like you know the, the dad's like look what he's doing over there and bobby's like oh that's just oliver yeah <laughs> the kids are cool with it um so I love his the- or what was his his origin story can you so his, explain yes he was in academia he yes. was a professor because his name was professor he had he, to be he wasn't just dr whitehead he was a professor at university and he kept feeling like he everyone else was passing him by and getting great discoveries he would like just narrowly miss things. People would find yeah. stuff. He was looking for mummies, ain't finding none. And then he discovers this big cave full of artifacts. And he and his mind goes from this is a fantastic archaeological discovery to if I announce this, people are going to steal it from me. So he stays mm-hmm. in the cave, living there on beans. And uh Where do the beans come from? He finds beans. Yeah. Uh and he his then plan is to I will make millions by selling this stuff. Fun fact: Vincent Price at this time was just as well known for film and acting as he was for art. Oh, I thought you were going to say like baked beans commercials. <laughs> baked beans commercials. He did those too. Uh, if you're calling about the feet. <laughs> um, no, he uh, he was a, a famous art collector. Uh, he was one of the first uh, in Hollywood to start um, bringing attention to uh, Mexican and South American uh, sculptures and arts and donated a lot of it to museums. Mm. Um, he was one of the real big factors of being like, hey, art is not just Renaissance masters. <laughs> yeah. Art is also things from the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so it's, I, th- I thought it was kind of ironic that he's like, no, no, I'm going to take these things and sell them. Cause it's, it's a reversal from who he was as a person. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it is wild that he is in this uh, episode and he has a spear and he's threatening the Brady boys who are tied up to, with a, with a spear. Good I mean, like spear. it's, it's just like a hair away from being, terrifying like from being like a horror scenario but like the three brady boys don't ever really seem to grasp no the kind of danger that this actually is and we're not talking about this in kind of a narrative fashion because there really is no narrative it really no it's like like that up until the end and then the flip side is i was hoping so when it cuts back to the girls like at the top of the episode and they're back at the hotel and the three of them are like why aren't they back we need to tell we should i was like oh good they're gonna they're getting to do something maybe they'll have more lines maybe they'll even get a storyline and it's like nope smash cut they're telling the parents and like and i'm like i want more marcia jan and cindy deserve to have a plot line in these three episodes brett are you insane brett you have vincent price on your soundstage in paramount <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna cut to someone else no 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 vincent price is gonna chew that scene okay well i want them in the first two Excuse episodes me. in the first two episodes i don't need to i don't need to i don't need a whole action sequence of peter having a spider crawl on his chest no i want to see jan trying to go on a date with that hawaiian boy and i want to see Oh, God, there was a whole thing in the first episode where Don Ho walks up to Bobby and Cindy and just performs a song. <laughs> a like, whole song. <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but no, uh, what what do you what fun facts do you have about the six Brady children or they're they're very interesting. I would say that two of them went on to I'm sure that they all are making still making tons of money off of. Brady Bunch, as it yes. is. Yes, I have interviewed Christopher Knight. Okay, uh, who Knight. spent most of the aughts uh, as a reality TV star with his wife, Adrian oh God, Curry. Adrian Curry from America's Next Top Model. <laughs> they unfortunately did split up about five years after they got married. That heyday. Um, but I would say that almost all of them have done reality TV, especially mm-hmm. in the last ten years. Uh, but Christopher Knight, who played Peter, uh, when this show is done, he's like. I want to learn computer programming. Oh, uh, got involved in computers, um, became a, a computers sales associate, uh, developed his own company, sold it for a bunch of money. Did, did great. I think so, he designs furniture now. Like, I think he has like a furniture line. Yeah, he can do that stuff. It's wild. Um, 
Uh, if you want to go oldest to young, and the other one who is doing supremely well is Eve Plum, who plays yeah. Jen. Uh, she had acting roles before and after. Uh, yep. You remember her from Family Affair. Family Affair, where she died. Where she died. And then um, she was the mom on Fudge in the 90s. Yep. She was doing that. She's done, She did like a lot of bit parts here and there, you know, kind of doing that, that like, you know, I'll guest star in a horror film. Uh, she is a fairly successful painter. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, she sold the house, the Malibu Beach house that she bought when she was 11. She bought it. She bought it for fifty five thousand dollars. Guess how much it sold for? Fifteen million. Three point nine million dollars. Oh, geez. So I mean, that's an investment. She's doing great. <laughs> um, Bar Barry Williams ended up doing a lot of Greg. Just yeah. just being Greg everywhere. Well, they all ended up being their own Brady's a lot, but like, yeah, yeah, he, uh, I think he embraced it. He lives in Branson. He has a band. Um, he does a lot of stage acting, which leads to his only scandal. Oh no. Oh, right. <laughs> his only scandal was he, d <laughs> he got fined $52,000 by the Actors' Equity Association for playing Captain Von Trapp in a non-union production of Sound of Music. Yes. Wait, when? Like, recently? <laughs> 2001. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that is not Greg uh, uh, era. That's way it later. Was the, it was, at the time, the largest fine they had ever levied. It was the equivalent of two weeks' salary. Wow. Um, oh, he God. He appealed it by saying that he had quit the union before it started, the union countered by saying you were still in the union when you signed the contract. Oh, and I looked up and I could not find uh, a resolution to it. Um, Barry, if you're listening, he did, but he did make up with the, uh, the union later. I'm going to say 2015, 2016, he unionized the cast of another show. So he was, he was welcomed back. Um, no problem. Good. Um, Maureen McCormick has done stuff. Yeah. She, she, was she does Hallmark movies and stuff, or she has in the past, I yeah. do believe. Uh, she has a lot of reality TV. Yeah. Um, but before, while she was doing this, uh, she was also the voice of several uh, talking dolls. Oh, God. <laughs> she was the voice of Chatty Cathy, if you if you remember that one. Oh, uh, wow. She's, she had a hard go of it, but she's came out on the other end doing Hallmark and reality yeah. TV. And still gorgeous. Still gorgeous. Uh, Susan Olsen, who played Cindy, uh, she had her own doll, a Cindy uh -huh. doll. And she's a graphic designer, talk show host. Um, she, oh, Jesus. Uh, which she got in trouble for because she apparently said a couple of slurs. Uh, yeah, she's a... Uh, somebody. Where was she on January 6th? <laughs> it's, it's the vibe. Because uh, she's a outspoken Trump supporter. <laughs> But also uh, to clear up a uh, a urban legend, she did not do pornography, uh, but she did provide space sound effects for a porn film at one point. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> so okay. Oh my uh, god! And then Mike Lookingland, who played Bobby, uh, he right after this, he was he did a little bit of acting. He's just like, I want to go in production side. Became a cameraman. Mm. Um, he made he does decorative concrete in uh salt lake city nice um, he did have a dui at one point but uh you know the only person Homest among us oh. <laughs> um the other people we can talk about uh robert reed we talked about robert reed uh a lot of interesting things about robert reed also that he was nominated for three emmys and twice he lost to ed asner <laughs> oh wait for what not uh, Brady Bunch. Like guess oh, spots. Oh no, no, other things. Other things. Uh, roots. Okay, okay. Roots, but lost uh, to Ed Asner. <laughs> you know, if you're uh, gonna lose to someone, uh, he was given Brady's as a consolation prize. He was going to do Barefoot in the, the TV version of Barefoot in the Park. Oh wow, the Neil Simon show. And then they decided they wanted to go with an all black cast. And he's just like, well, that leaves me out. And they're like, we got this other show. <laughs> Brady Bunch. Oh God! Wow. Uh, so that's how he got that. Um, looking up for other, yeah. I, I, just so much interesting things. Florence Henderson, uh, she was in a show called The Paul Good and Halloween Special. 
<laughs> the Pauline Halloween special. Oh. She did an industrial musical for Oldsmobile. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, guy, if y'all don't know, industrial musicals were like a full, full fledged. Watch Bathtubs Over Broadway, a fantastic documentary from Late Show with David Letterman writer Steve Young. Uh, it's 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 fantastic and it's all about the full-fledged musicals that they would put on for like company retreats in like 60s and 70s he did this one called she did one called good news about olds for <laughs> oldsmobile and she did this song don't let a be back get away um she was an oldsmobile spokesperson from 1958 to 1961 on the oh, Patty wow. Page show but she was also the first woman to guest host the tonight show oh work so yeah and then Ambie Davis was uh, in a cult. She was. It wasn't a cult. It was. It was a Christian. <laughs> well, but I mean, it wasn't it kind of creepy. Well, she. she or, uh, okay, she three. worked. Once she left Hollywood, she went to go work at I believe it was a Catholic, like a, a home for priests. Mm -hmm. So she did like chores and took care of them. Um, but she was also like uh, Alice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she won two Emmys. For the Bob Cummings show. Oh, right. And, yeah. Cause she had a big, big uh, history yeah. before this, like 20 years earlier. Uh, she was on the, the, the SAG board mm -hmm. and she did a USO tours of Vietnam uh, and Korea. <laughs> and I would say she's, I mean, she, she has like Al Lewis style comedy chops. I yeah, think that that's, you know, she, she's, she's the, uh, and Alice doesn't do anything in this episode. <laughs> Alice shows up. <laughs> with the parents in the hotel room has no lines mm -hmm. and then uh you know mike and and um what's her name carol. carol carol they leave to go they they go they go find the kids they find the kids at the cave and they can convince... they follow they follow bobby's popcorn trail that yep. has somehow stayed there all day uh <laughs> which which um, they do actually point out where carol's like these this popcorn could be days old and and Mike's like, well, not not with all the animals out here. He's like, <laughs> uh, they get to the cave and they have a nice sit down with Vincent Price. Can we just uh, put this in a real world? Neither of us have children, but I would like to imagine that if I walked into a cave and I saw my three sons tied to tiki like monuments and an old man with a spear. I probably would not just sit him down for a talking to <laughs> like this. It's so... Well, they were probably like, Oh my God, is that Vincent price? He was totally in the fly. He's great. <laughs> the <laughs> let's, bat. Let's talk to him about abominable Dr. Fives. That's fantastic. Let's do that right now. <laughs> it, it is so weird. The fact that like Robert, the fact that Mike Brady, he has a conversation with him. And then he doesn't think that he's weird until he sees him talking to Oliver. And I'm like, wait, you, this guy, Professor Whitehead is weird off the bat, like straight away. He doesn't need to start talking to an inanimate object for everyone to be like, that's a weird dude. <laughs> Bobby's <laughs> like, oh, it's Oliver. Yeah, it's that, just... that was the only good line in the whole thing is like, oh, it's just Oliver. Oh man, I laughed at something and I can't remember what it was. It might've been the beans. I did like the beans. Vincent Price talks about beans quite a bit. He's, He's got like, I need to go warm up my beans. <laughs> it's like... some beans. It was, <laughs> it was a running gag. Honestly, I, I got to say the laugh track guy had the week off because there was not a lot of it. And that's fine. Yeah. It was, it was, it, it played for drama. Yeah. This is a dramatic Great. episode. It was Vincent Price star of, you know, the house on haunted Hill. Um, like I said, theater of blood pit and the pendulum, the rain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the pre-thriller pre yeah yeah so like he uh they they get the kids uh he professor whitehead explains his plight about like always being looked over and you know he wants to donate you know, he wants fame essentially from artifacts <laughs> and then he gets it by a luau yeah they they mike convinces him that well, no one's going to steal your claim if, you know, there's five we... witnesses. Or... Exactly. I keep forgetting Carol's name that, that Carol and the boys will vouch for you. And all within the span of like a day, 
He gets completely, you know, faded by the university. He gets yeah, his own like, wing at the museum. A wing opens up, and I'm like, this man just held three children hostage <laughs> with a <laughs> weapon. But it has been advice. living in a cave eating beans for how long, you know? It's advice, Star of Cry of the Banshee. <laughs> it's just so nuts. Um, uh. So it ends with a luau. It ends with a luau. And it's yeah. a luau on a soundstage. Uh-huh. Um, with fire dancers. And let me talk to you about fire the fire dancers. They we get they get a whole number. They get a whole number. And the music is being played live on the set because I, I oh. shazammed it because I was like, those voices sound a little canned. And then I'm noticing like in the back, all the, the drumming matches up to the hand movements. I'm like, okay, yeah. this is live. One of the one of the fire dancers is Kim Kahana. Kim Kahana has an entire documentary about him what? as a stunt performer. Oh, work. <laughs> like he did, he did stunts for uh, Smokey and the Bandit, uh, Soil and Green, Cool Hand Luke, The Wild One. Uh, he was uh, the stunt double for Charles Bronson for twenty years. Jesus Christ! Um, he was. How also... is he slumming it on the Brady Bunch doing fire dancing? Uh, he. This was when he was just like I. You know, I'm doing work. Sure. So give me a, a day or two on the Brady set, and I'll do this. Um, he was. Uh, one of the he was the sidekick in the Hanna Barbera show Danger Island. He played Chongo. <laughs> so, and then he's he's just this nondescript fire dancer, one of two, and he just he's he's still alive. He's like 94, 95 years old, still doing stunts, has a stunt school. Like he's the real deal. Good for him. He might be he might be bigger than Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, he's had a long career. Yeah. He was in Cool Hand Luke and is still going. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, God. 95, 90, 94, 95. Um, so, yeah. And Vincent Price is there with, with them all. He's dressed in nice Hawaii. So excited. And uh, okay, so, I mean, I will say, Vincent Price throughout this episode is giving you Vincent Price. It is oh, good. It is so good. It's so good. He's having, I don't. I don't know if he's having a good time. But he is performing. I won't even say that he's giving it his all because it's probably is not his all. I will say as an audience member, I was entertained. As a huge fan of Vincent Price, I'm hard pressed to point out the the performance of his in a film that I'm like, that's his best performance. Because I, I really think that it would be probably one of his earlier movies rather than the later horror ones. Because the later horror ones, yeah. are, like I, I would say, like Laura is probably one of his 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 good ones. Um, what are some of the the other good good ones? Like he did a whole bu bunch of movies before he started getting into horror things. Um, I'm looking it up real fast because I'm uh, Laura was the big one. Um, boop, 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 boop. Better or worse than him as Professor Whitehead? Uh better. Okay. Better. It's it's different, you know? It's different. I will I will say, um, so in a very Brady sequel, when they do this, uh the Professor Whitehead is in it at the very end, played by Magnum PI's John Hillerman. Um What? Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in it as Dr. Whitehead at the very end. And he's not crazy and he has a big mansion and it's it's really just in name only. It's kind of like when when Fox is like this oh, character, Psylocke, right. and it's like she doesn't say anything. Is it really yeah, her? Right. Okay. It's like this uh, is Dr. Whitehead. It's John Hillerman. Yeah. That's clever. Uh, yeah. That's and clever, also you know? there are a lot of like I really respect the script writing for a very brave sequel. Because also in the Hollywood portion, in the in the in the Hawaii portion. Um, it's Carol that is kidnapped and she leaves a trail of yarn for them to follow. Like Bobby leads, yeah. leads popcorn, you know, there's the surfing. There's also the rowboat. And yeah, it, it's 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 very well done. I love that. Idol shows up too. The idol shows up. They just like throw it and throw it. <laughs> yeah. I remember this. I remember the idol. I remember my our neighbors had a tiki, a little tiki like that. And I'm like, that's the idol. That's the cursed idol from Brady Bunch. Touch it. 
<laughs> I remember well, I remember Vincent Price threatening the kids in the cave and then being confused why they're all hanging out with him later and there's no problem with it. Yeah, all is forgiven as a kid. All like all can be forgiven. Because it's Vincent yeah. Price. It's Vincent Price. It's Hawaii. Let's just have a good time. Star of Haunted Palace. Star of Tower of London. Star of Are House you ready for some must-have facts? Yeah. Um I don't know what the ratings were because I could not find any uh, ratings that had actual numbers, but it had to be below 19.5 million because it was not in the top 30 for the season. It never broke the top 30. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So this so the week prior, part two of the Hawaii saga was uh, number 43 for the week because I did Mm -hmm. find ratings for that. The top five uh, TV shows for the prior week because I couldn't find the ratings (laughs) for this week. Uh, number five was Bridget Loves Bernie. Number four was a screening of the movie Cactus Flower. Number three was Marcus Welby. Number two, All in the Family. And number one, the television premiere of Love Story. Oh, well, yeah. Love so Story. A lot of movies. A lot of movies in the you fall. don't talk about Love Story anymore, but it was huge. Well, in love means never having to say you're sorry, right? Is that That's or, the movie. Or love never means having to say you're ugly, which is the the tagline from Abominable Doctor Five, starring Vincent Price. What? Wait, is it a parody of that? No, just the poster. Oh, wild. Okay, the poster's uh, terrible. The movie is yeah. fantastic. Like the movie, I would say Abominable Doctor Five's. Not only is it my favorite Vincent Price movie, it's in like my top two or three favorite movies of all time. It's that Letterbox profile. Top oh, four. it's so good. Uh, the ABC Friday Night lineup, which we have discussed in the past, uh, and I can't remember, um, is fully bananas. Uh, it is The Brady Bunch, The Partridge Family, makes sense. Then Room 2, 222 and The Odd Couple. So like hard turn into like adult comedies. Adult and then comedies. Love American Style. Love American Style. A show that influenced everything that no one can speak to anymore because it's forgotten from the public consciousness. It's one of those. I mean, it's basically like imagine if uh, the Love Boat was a even had a different cruise uh, crew every week. Like it's right because yeah. it was like an it was an anthology dramedy love yeah. story thing. Yeah. Um. So what are you gonna be watching on this uh, grand night? Um, this Friday night in October on There's ABC one- the. There's one yeah. key fact. If they tell me that Vincent Price is going to be there, that changes the whole game. If well, Vincent Price is not on there, then we we'll... haven't seen what else is up. What else? Is... So ABC, the Brady Munch, the Tiki Caves, Vincent Price, master of the horror flicks, pr- plays Professor Whitehead, a sinister archaeologist who encounters the Bradys during their Hawaiian visit. The boys actually are returning an idol to the burial caves, but the professor thinks they're trying to steal it. Just so offhandedly. Yeah, the boys are just going to the burial caves. They do that on the Brady Bunch. You know, another week. <laughs> um, on CBS, we have the Sonny and Cher Hour. Detective Fat comes back. That's Tony Curtis in a spoof of gangster pictures. Cher plays gun maw Penelope Plump. And Barbara McNair is Sally Stout, a nightclub singer. Sonny is Harry Obese, the hired gun. Miss <laughs> McNair sings a medley of I Believe in Music and Without a Song. Curtis also plays Macbeth to Cher's Lady Macbeth in the Vamp portion this week. <laughs> and- I don't Okay. And lastly, on NBC, we have Sanford and Son. Fred Sanford gets upset when he discovers his fiance's patient, Osgood Wilcox, guest star Roscoe Lee Brown, has eyes for her. When Donna brings her patient to the Stanford house, Fred surmises he isn't really sick. What are you watching? Oh, if it were any other any other night, I'd be watching Sanford and Son. But the Vincent Price would pull me over to the Brady Bunch. So you're not watching Brady Bunch every week? No, no, no. Now, I would now have, in this 1972, are you known as a Vincent Price fan? Oh, yeah. In oh, 1972. Yeah. So oh, I've been a after, fan of his since the 50s. After last week's episode, and your, your Sanford son's just gone off, your phone is probably blowing up with people calling you, being like, Vincent Price was on the last second of Brady Bunch. And so now, okay, so you have a week's notice, it's 1972, and you know Vincent Price is going to have a starring role in the Brady Bunch this Friday. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare? What do you plan? 
What do you do? Well, first thing I do is I ask my friends if they watch the Brady Bunch to, to, to sit, tell me what's happening. Why is Vincent <laughs> Price there? Did he say anything? Did he talk about me? Did he mention any of his famous <laughs> movies? Um, what's Vincent Price doing there? A lot of questions about Vincent Price, but I've tried yeah. to get if, if it's if it's like a you know a continuity thing, try to figure out what the first two episodes of this Brady nonsense is. Uh, then probably, um, oh, there's no internet. Yeah, that's the, yeah. you're not going to be able to watch it. I wouldn't be able to watch it. And like, I can't go to the library and say, hey, what's going on with Vincent Price on the Brady Bunch? They would have no idea. So that, I would probably be very excited though. And I'd eat my TV and my food in front of the TV that night. Okay. You wouldn't have a party? No, but I wouldn't stick around. I also wouldn't stick around for Partridge Family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on IMDb, 267 Brady Heads gave this a 7.8 out of 10. Uh, reminder that you gave Make Room for Daddy an 8.4 and The Monsters a 5.9. Where does this episode of The Brady Bunch with Vincent Price rank? This would get a 7.9 from me. Oh, wow. Would, oh, wow. Like, so you're even going higher than The Brady Heads. Yeah, I would, I would say, well, because I'm... I'm not a Brady head. I'm a Vincent Price guy. And this, so like, this is a this is some this is primo Vincent Price. And I think I would be hard pressed to say that any episode of the Brady Bunch is primo Brady Bunch. Yeah, because okay. none of them ever really give like great performances. No, uh, maybe it's like a classic episode where like Marsha gets hit in the face with the football. football. Yeah, like maybe that one, something like that, or the Davy Jones episode. But this is. I'm not looking at I'm not looking at this being like, oh, what are the Brady's going to get up to? I'm looking at yeah, this yeah, yeah. fanboy. And if you have not understood how much of a fanboy of Vincent Price I am <laughs> by this point of the podcast, my God, listen to it again. Yeah, I, I think I would go 7.5. Yeah, I think I might be jaded by having watched the previous two and been just like, God, give me the, the, this one is better than those first two, though, I will say. I thought it was a fine episode. I thought it was a really fun episode. Vincent Price got some good gags. Hey, look, the man does comedy. The man's done tons of oh, comedy. Oh, everything. He did uh he did Comedy of Terrors, he did The Raven. This wasn't even Muppet his Show. first This wasn't even his first beach picture. He did the movie Beach uh the Beach Party in 1963 uh with Barbara Eden. Oh, Got to plays, watch that. He plays Big Daddy. He shows up right at the end. Um, <laughs> I think yeah. uh, I think I know who we will both say has the must see performance in this episode. Uh, Oliver. It's not, no, it's not Bobby. <laughs> no, not no. Peter. Not Greg. It's definitely it's definitely Professor Whitehead, an icon of icons. Um, and must other people see this episode of yes. television? Yes, you must. This is required reading for the course. Oh wow. Like, yes, if if you want to watch a Brady Bunch episode, if like if someone like holds a gun to your head is like you have to watch a Brady Bunch episode, Jeez. season four, episode it's like three, three. It's like that's my kind of sociopath. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so I will say, you know, it helps that not only is Vincent Price in this, this is also an iconic Brady Bunch storyline. Correct. Like if you ask people to name five Brady Bunch, you know, episodes or whatever, the Hawaii arc is going to be one of those five. So it isn't like Vincent Price is wasted in a random episode. Yeah. Like it's like a Cindy episode or something. Ugh. <laughs> Did you know that the that they had a dog named Tiger? Yeah. That died after the fifth episode. But they Wait. didn't the, the real dog died. The real dog? Oh god. The real dog died. But at the same time, a light fell from the from the the rigging and burned a hole in the astro astroturf, and they just put the doghouse over it. So they never addressed the fact that the dog was gone. <laughs> they just yes. used, they used the house to cover oh over the burn get, mark. Just get some, get some new astroturf, guys. Okay, uh, and that is you know I think that's everything. Yeah. Uh, so next week or in two weeks, we'll be jumping to the 80s and talking about uh, the new Gidget. Right? Is that what's actually yeah. called? Yeah, the new Gidget, the pilot episode windsurfing lesson, uh, which is available to stream on YouTube officially. For 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 realsies, for realsies, as an official production company put it up. So the new Gidget 
windsurfing lesson, keeping that summer vibes alive. Um, I, now, I don't know where you saw this episode of the Brady Bunch, but I watched it on Pluto TV. Oh. And I learned that if you pause during the commercials, those commercials will stay up for an hour. But if you pause during the show itself, after like a minute or two, it just, the show goes away and it takes you all the way back to the menu. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you're going to watch this or not. Uh, and if you were on my Plex account, I watched it on my Plex account. Because <laughs> Paramount Plus doesn't have part one of this triptych. So I and uh, neither does neither does Pluto TV. I wonder if it's D D Don Ho's people not signing off. Oh my gosh, maybe that's usually the that's usually the thing when there is a a random hole is someone didn't someone didn't sign the waiver. Oh, because he uh, did a song because it's, it's yeah. all about the rights. Yeah. Oh right. Yep. Yeah, he did a song. Music rights. Uh. Uh. But yeah, where can people find you on the internet if they want to talk to you about Vincent Price? <laughs> Check me out on Ethan K fifty five at Instagram. I'm happy to talk about Vincent Price. <laughs> I have some Vincent Price memorabilia. I love him. <laughs> how about you brett yeah. where can people find you you know you can uh you know find me on instagram at brett white you can follow my drag persona barb hardly on youtube and instagram which is of note to podcast listeners because by the time this comes out my um barb hardly answering nick at night classic tv trivia board game questions video will be out <laughs> <laughs> where I just stood there in drag and answered 30 questions from the trivia game that I just bought. Correctly. 1996. I got 15 out of 30 right. Oh my gosh. Uh, which is oh. fine, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, were, there like, were there like 15 questions all about like Love American style and you're like, I don't know the answer. Well, there were multiple about Patty Duke's show and I'm like, I've seen one one episode of that recently <laughs> in like the last 30 years so i don't know uh yeah and yeah please follow me there and as always of course go to the patreon subscribe five dollars a month gets you a new episode every other week of must have now tv and access to this mythical plex server that i'm figuring out as well as written content and whatever else we put up there yeah you get a lot for your five dollars a month definitely I would say that the must have now TV is definitely, definitely worth that money. Because where else are you going to hear me talk about beep and beep? See, <laughs> you'll never know what I said. Uh, thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Stav Scene TV. Oh.